I can't believe this is working. <laughs> 170 Fahrenheit. At 70, almost 80 degrees Celsius. So my goal is to get this uh, cylinder head up to about 200 degrees. And uh, I'm getting there with this little Harbor Freight uh, heat gun. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's a little bit warmer today, so that helps. As you can hear, my cold isn't any better. But to practice, I'm warming up this uh, hunk of aluminum here. I'm trying to get this to about 200 degrees. So it's tricky to read. Uh, oh, we're getting there. Oh, yeah, uh, it's tricky to uh, to read the, the temperature of aluminum with one of these heat guns because uh, aluminum is so reflective that the gun tends to read whatever the aluminum is reflecting and not the aluminum itself. But I think this is uh, probably close to about 200 degrees. Oh, this is it's more. Yeah, like I said, it's tricky. A little bit easier with this uh, casting because of all the rough, uh, you know, stained parts of it. So, yeah, this is already, it's already too hot to touch. So, so I'm going to practice uh, putting a little bit, adding a little bit of uh, aluminum here. And we're going to try and hammer it off. See how it holds. That's too bad. Now I got a little bit of cratering, even though I, uh, even though I let it sit there a little bit longer at the end. So I don't want that cratering. I know from what I read that can cause cracks. So I'm gonna put this in the vise and see if I can break it off. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm almost ready for the real thing. Alright, well where can I put this super hot piece of aluminum so that I don't step on it? This is amazing. Look at the wall of this is in spots it's like 300 Fahrenheit. That's 100, 130 Celsius. Yeah, 175 is probably Oh, we'll get a little bit higher. I'm also going to fire up this heater. Try and keep the uh, lock on the heat gun. Starting to warm up. I was going to clean this out again with acetone, but honestly. 
don't think that's going to help at all because I think it's just going to uh, vaporize the minute it touches this hot metal. So I'm just going to try and get in here pretty good with the wire brush. Yeah, I know it's not going to be great. Give it a little pass with the Dremel. all around the well. Like uh tiny bits of aluminum that got deposited I think. Yeah. That no, doesn't look too bad. What? They're filling that little spot right there. I was just excited. Yeah. Yeah, I think this just might work. I'll have to see when I grind these down if I have any depressions. Right there, well, that should be okay still, I think. And we're gonna find out. So, I got a couple more to do right there. Oh, well, while I'm at it, right? <laughs> Not going too bad. All right. But Dennis, you ask, you've got all that big gobby aluminum on the top of your cylinder head now. How are you going to get that off? Well, I'm going to cut it off. When I bought this uh, router, I got an extra collet for it for 3 8 inch. And that's really handy for some sizes of end mills, which are actually cheaper than woodworking tools. So you can get um, carbide, this is actually I think a high-speed high steel, but you can get, um, this is four fluid, it's kind of more for steel or, or uh, 
Uh, it'll work on aluminum fine, but not, not so much, not very good for wood. But you can get like two flute end mills uh, cheaper than you can get um, woodworking tools for. But the plus is that this router will also cut aluminum. So the way I'm going to set this up, <laughs> one-handed here, is uh, I'm going to put this end mill in and I'm going to rest it on some paper and I'll just show you. So I've got this tightened in there. Now this is a plunge cut uh, router so I could just plunge it down but um, the problem with that is it's hard to judge how much force to give it. So I'd rather just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna loosen the collet until, until the end mill drops out. Hopefully I can show you. There we go. So now that it's resting on two pieces of paper, one piece of paper is about three thou, so it's about six thousandths of an inch clearance. And we're going to double check that, of course, but... Okay, that's nice and tight. So now... There's just ever so much clearance under there. I should be able to get a piece of paper, yeah, right under there, no problem. So it's not gonna cut completely to the surface, but it'll cut pretty darn close. So I'm gonna put this on the surface of the cylinder head, very gently and carefully run it over it. That's the plan. So I do have some pitting in here now, uh, and I think this right here is the most worrisome because of um, the gasket seal for the cylinder is like right over it. So um, I'm, I'm going to have to grind that out a little bit and weld it back up there. And I might as well do some of these other ones that are uh, a little bit pitted here. but. Otherwise, I don't think it looks too bad. Um, and then, of course, I got to come back with the Dremel and, and um, reshape these holes. Get some of the extra stuff out of there. But, uh, yeah. This might actually work. <laughs> so now, of course, the surface isn't um, completely flat. So um, I'm going to have to flatten it to a completely flat surface so that the gasket, uh, so that it meets to the block uh, well and the gasket sits right and of course clean up. There's like a, a few thousands um, in some places where this is a little bit high and you know, so I gotta clean that all, all down. But that is going to be for a future video. So um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> I didn't, uh, 
didn't think it was going to work quite this well. But, uh, well, we're not done yet. So we still have to check to see if the uh, valves kept their alignment because of all the heating we did over here. And maybe I warped the head and then it's still uh, all for naught. But we will find out. So hit subscribe. <clears throat> Hopefully uh, future videos I will get my voice back. And um, if you're curious to see what happens, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell next to it to get notified if you want to see uh, my, get notified of my future videos. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, any comments you have, leave them down below. Um, uh, I, I really like to hear from, from you guys. You have a lot of good information. And uh, this is not a how-to channel. This is just a get-or-done, try-it-out kind of channel. So... Um, we're learning as we go and it's, uh, that's, what's fun about this. So, all right. Appreciate it guys. See you next time.